Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. I'm your host Rob. This video we're going to do a little Game of Thrones character profiling. We've already done one with Marjorie Tyrell, and this one we're going to do Tyrion Lannister. Okay guys, welcome back. So Tyrion Lannister obviously is one of the most popular characters on Game of Thrones and uh, probably the most pe popular character on Game of Thrones. And, and with complete understanding, he's probably the biggest underdog on the show uh, in terms of his size. You know, he's not really too capable of protecting himself. Uh, he's a pretty good fighter though. We've seen him, you know, cut off some legs and smash some faces with shields in the past. But for the most part, he uses his intelligence and his wit uh, and his negotiating to really get himself out of some pretty hairy situations. Now, this, you know, last year, he, obviously, his biggest, the probably, probably the one group of people he cannot dis outwit or get out of any kind of trouble by outwitting or out-negotiating is his own family, uh, in particular, his father. And, um, you know, last year, we saw him pretty much treat it like crap. You know, the beginning of the season, he was in a little room, uh, he had just woken up after being nearly killed, thanks to his uh, his nephew, and um, really, really odd stacked against him. To make matters worse, you know, his father forces him to marry Sansa Stark. During the wedding, his nephew's pretty much embarrassing them by taking the stool away, and, and it just, you know, Joffrey's just another whole story in and of itself. But Tyrion this year is going to be interesting because... Um, now, you know, he's he's getting pressure from uh, Tywin to, to basically, uh, you know, have sex with Sansa so they can have a kid and commence their marriage. He refuses to do so. You know, he still has Shay who, you know, he genuinely loves her and, and it seems like she genuinely loved him. And now she's in a position where she's got to kind of see them together. And not that they're intimate because they don't hold hands and none of that, but just the idea that the man she loves is married to somebody that she's serving, I'm sure does not <laughs> bode well for her, or it probably goes up her ass sideways. Now, my biggest thing with Tyrion last year was, obviously, you know, whether or not he dies, no one's going to care, in terms of his family. I don't think Cersei would give a shit. I don't think uh, Tywin would give a shit. Uh, and the worst part about it is that Joffrey... Pretty much, I guess at any given moment, could send somebody over to kill him. So he's consistently having to watch his back. And uh, I think, though, the one thing that works in his favor this year is Jamie. Jamie returning to the fold, I think, is going to help things a little bit because Jamie is pretty, you know, it seems from what I've gathered the first three seasons and then the story about the, the woman and the whore and all that stuff, it seems like Jamie, for the most part, you know, even though that whole story with the whore. Uh, probably questionable what Jamie did and stuff like that, but I, I think it's an, there's an understanding, and but it sounds to me like you know for the most part it seems like Jamie genuinely loves his brother at least, and you know and uh, I think hopefully I'm hoping because I like I like Tyrion a lot and I don't want to see him die with this show. That anybody is like anybody can get axed at any given time we've seen that already they're they don't hold back on this show so the last thing i want to see is Tyrion die and i don't think he will i think for the most part he's got a long story to tell but i think having jamie back is going to help him a little bit um but still even with that I'm, my biggest concern for Tyrion this season is trying to watch his back basically now, with Marjorie there distracting Joffrey, I think that's another thing that works in his favor. I think the one thing he's going to have to be concerned with this year is basically delaying or procrastinating having sex with Sansa at his father forcing him or forcing his hand. Uh, he, I don't think he's going to do it. I, I, don't, I just don't see them doing it. Uh, of course, I'm not a book reader. It, I'm sure there's a lot of book readers who are probably going to say otherwise. Oh, it happened. But again, and, and that's why, once again, the comments are going to be set for approval. So that way nobody can spoil anything. But I think this year Tyrion is, is going to be in a crossroads. Because if he still feels his life's in danger, I think to me, uh, it's either get the hell out of there 
and go somewhere where it's a little safer, which I th- which he kind of tried to do already. He kind of wanted, uh, or I, I don't remember for the top of my head, and I know some of you guys can probably tell me on, the, on below, so let me know. But I th- he did ask his father for you know, some sort of land or I, I forget what it was. I, I don't remember every detail. There's so much to remember about the show. But he did request of his father to have land of his own and things of that nature. His father denied him, uh, told him that he he didn't feel he should uh or or that he did not have any right to anything that was his father's. And obviously these guys, even though they're adults, are very dependent on their dad. So, you know, with Cersei there who you kind of wonder if she even has any kind of care for him because they have had some very minor moments where they seem to have shared a little something uh for the most part i don't think she gives a shit about him we know joffrey doesn't give a shit about him we know uh tywin doesn't give a shit about him um so he's not in the best of uh company um it wouldn't surprise me if his own family offed him without it being them directly you know, they all blame him for his mother's, for their mother's uh, death and Tywin's wife's death, which is absurd because he had no control over that. It's not his fault he was born that way, you know, to be, you know, uh, an imp and, and to be born in such a way that his mother died during birth. It's not his fault, but they don't seem to care about that. And um, overall, though, I think his story arc, this, and I said this with Marjorie, because I think she's going to have an impact this year. I also think his story arc is going to be very interesting because he's in a position right now where he really can't talk his way out of it like in the past. He's dealing with his own family, which is just as worse as dealing with anything else. And we know Joffrey wants him dead. We know his brother's back now, and that might help him a little bit. But for the most part, it's going to be very interesting to see where Tyrion goes this year, uh, this season rather, in terms of his own safety. Does he stay in Westeros and, and just keep an eye on his back and deal with what he has to deal with, or does he just decide to take off? Um, I think, in my opinion, and this is just a guess, I, I, you know, I don't know if this is how it goes down. I haven't read the book. This is just my own speculation. I think at one point he's going to be forced to leave, whether it's somebody trying to kill him or just feeling like he doesn't he's not safe there anymore even with his brother there be interesting to see this season i'm looking forward to it april is not that far away we're just a shade under three months away so it's going to be good stuff very excited uh trailer was great so uh we'll see what happens you guys please share in the comments below and bear with me as i approve them going forward but uh i just don't want anybody spoiling anything take it easy and i'll see you next video